It actually landed. All right, so this, these little motors, and this chunk of foam board are all that remain from the Crave Monster combat robot they built last year. So it is time to rebuild this guy, uh, but with a twist this year. Let's get started. For this project, I've got my trusty Hobby King remote and receiver, a small 370 milliamp hour two cell battery, Endgames Robotics ECE, some cheap eBay DC motors, a cheap Hobby King servo, and then 0.02 millimeter thick aluminum sheet metal. Of course, I've got my Crave cereal box. I've also got Dollar Tree Ready Board, which is the lightest foam board I can find. And then to join that, I've got some Gorilla Glue, which is lighter than hot glue. And finally, because I'm designing this on the fly, I've got a 12 inch by 12 inch border taped under the table so my robot doesn't exceed the allowed dimensions. I start by soldering some wires to the motor uh, control pins of the Endgames Robotics electronic speed controller and these just go to my small DC motors and I'm not worried about polarity here I'm just wiring them up however I'll be able to change the direction they rotate later in the programming if it's wrong. Next I start cutting the foam board for the bottom of the mouth part of the robot so this is going to be 10 inches wide and the foam board part will be 5 inches deep so I mark off 5 inches and then it'll be 2.5 inches tall like the back part of the mouth. So I mark those two off and then cut out the two rectangles. After those two panels, I also cut out a third rectangle that's on the left there if you want the dimensions. And now I'm cutting out the side of the robot. This will be kind of the bottom jaw and also form the side panel of the robot. It's 11 inches long and 2.5 inches tall. And there will be two of these, one for each side, so this is just the first one. Before gluing anything, I mock up how it's going to go together. This is a simpler design than I used last time. There's only two wheels in the back, but like last time, the whole front of the robot is one large uh, bottom half of the mouth. And then when gluing, I use Gorilla Glue, and this is the type of glue that requires water to activate. So I've got a little dish of water here so I can just damp down the foam board before setting the joint. Here's what the chassis looks like now. It'll get a metal wedge and some extra reinforcements later, but as it is right now, it is about one ounce, which is pretty good for being 10.5 inches wide and 11 inches long. Next up are the wheels. I've 3D printed these out of PLA plastic, so they will shatter instantly if they get hit, but they're really cheap. It's easy to put a rubber band around them for extra grip, and uh, they're very lightweight as well. To keep the rubber band from falling off, I go around adding dabs of super glue, mostly to my fingers, but some of it gets under the rubber band and keeps it in place. Another part that I've 3D printed ahead of time are these little motor mount guys, and I forgot to slide them on before wiring up the motor. Uh, so now to get them fitted, I have to cut little slots in them with some scissors, that way I can fit in the wiring and then slide them over the motor. Also all these 3D printed parts, uh, link to them in the description. So after attaching the wheels to the motor shafts and adding a little super glue to secure those, it's time to attach the motors to the foam board chassis. And for this I use super glue. I also add a little slot so that the wires can go from the ECE up to the top part of the robot. And up top is where I glue on the receiver. Next I need to make the chompy mouth part of the robot. So I take my servo, uh, attach the servo horn so it's centered and then I take a barbecue skewer um, and I cut that to the about the length of the mouth and I glue that to the servo horn and the way that the Gorilla Glue expands around the servo horn it kind of encapsulates that um, as the glue drives and I just use a piece of tape to hold the skewer in place while the glue is drying. I then eyeball where I want to attach the servo so that it can move the mouth up and down. I decide wrong, it's a little bit too far centered, but it ends up being okay. I super glue the servo down to the body and I cut a notch in the body so that the servo horn and the barbecue skewer are clear. I then cut two foam blocks out that are the same size as that servo and these will form the mount on the left hand side. With that, it's time to actually cut out the mouth. So I take my Crave cereal box, mark out how 
big I want the mouth to be and then just start hacking away at the box until I get the top half of my robot's mouth. Now the box itself is too flimsy, so I cut out some foam board teeth and I glue these around the edge of the inside of the box to stiffen it up. These foam board pieces also serve as a good mounting point for the hinges and the barbecue skewer. So I added a little tabs to the left and right side and I'll use these to attach the mouth to the body. I start by carving a groove in the foam board that the barbecue skewer will be able to rest inside of. I then add a piece of tape to the bottom of the barbecue skewer just to prevent glue from dripping. I damp down the barbecue skewer with some water, coat everything in Gorilla Glue, and then attach the mouth, making sure I press the barbecue skewer down into that groove in the foam board. Once that dries, I form a little hinge on the left-hand side of the mouth between the foam board that forms the left teeth and those little foam chunks I cut a while back that are the same size as the right-hand side servo and I use a little piece of the same barbecue skewer to form the joint for the hinge. And with that, I have a working mouth that can open and close. Now for the first metal piece of this combat robot. The front wedge is going to be 10 inches by 3 inches, so I cut that out of the aluminum with my Dremel tool, and then I sand it sharp, and this is going to determine if this robot is successful or not, is how sharp I can get the wedge. If the wedge is sharper than everyone else in the competition, they're going to end up in this robot's mouth. Once I feel the front edge is sharp enough, I install it into the bottom of the robot's mouth with some more Gorilla Glue and then some extra metal epoxy. I'm at the home stretch now. I install a back panel, a panel covering the ECE, the battery, a guard for the inside of the mouth, and of course the googly eyes. I also add little frowny eyebrows to make them even better. I connect up the servo to the channel 3 and the drive motors to channel 1 and 2. And then cover that back part with a piece of the box. When I connect up the battery, the little guy comes alive. And then to get it to drive straight and correctly, I have to reverse some of the channels on my remote. So that is how I built the next Crave Monster, and here's the best part. It weighs one pound, with two of them. That's right, despite the fact this was the largest ant weight last year, I was able to half the weight and I'm going to enter two of them as a multi-box. So with this video, it took a while because I was trying to approach an Instructables level of detail without it becoming boring and tedious. So if you have any feedback on how that worked, let me know. I tried to make it detailed enough that you could follow along and build this yourself because this is an easy one. You don't need a machine shop or anything. You can do this at home. And hopefully someone builds six of them and enters them as a three-pound beetle. That would be awesome.